welcome back to the Voyage Outdoor podcast. This is episode two. Um, we appreciate you that are listening in. Um, we're excited about this. We actually are missing Austin this time. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it, um, but he's out there working, you know, providing for us now. Uh, he's busy right now with work, so he could not make it, but we're gonna do um, a little, you know, 2v2 um, podcast or 1v1, sorry. Um, but we're just going to talk about some things today uh, as far as, um, you know, archery and, and different mistakes and things that archers make uh, when buying, setting up, shooting your bow. Um, Tyler has worked around bows for quite a while and, um, he, you know, he doesn't anymore, but he, he has a very wide knowledge of, of bows. And we just kind of want to dive into that and kind of learn some something at least. And I know firsthand that I'll probably learn something today, so I hope you do too. Um, but my first thing was that I wanted to go over was just, you know, mainly what, what, what would be the number one mistake you saw people make, um, that had been in the, been hunting and bow hunting for a long time, right? You always have your archers that come in the front door that has been hunting for, you know, 15 years or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and what mistakes do they make? Cause we, we can dive into the newbies. All newbies have all different things, how you teach them, but the old guys, right? The guys have been doing it for a while. What's the number one mistake that bow hunters make when shooting their bow that they could improve on? And it could be anything, what do you think? Oh man, I would say that's a really good question. You know, guys have been shooting archery for a long time, the 10, 15, 20, you know, long time, but I'd say the number one mistake is blaming the equipment. Yeah. It's not always the equipment. I mean, these guys nowadays in these shops can, you know, tune these bows incredible, shoot them straight. You always get the, it's the equipment's fault. And I think it really boils down to being confident. Yeah. Um, well, we talked about that in episode one, too. Yeah. And confident, yeah, we talked about that the first episode. Confidence goes a long ways, but it's not the equipment. I think it's the shooter. I think when it boils down to it, you know, there's target panic. I think yeah. everybody kind of has that a little bit. Yeah. 10, 20, 60, 80, however far you're do, shooting. Do you do anything for not just target panic, but like when you're that five seconds on a deer is a different adrenaline? Ooh. Is there anything you do prepping for that when you, when you shoot or, or help people? Uh, so shoot? you're a golfer, you'll like this one. Yeah. It's all in the can. We all, we all have the same, same points, same checkpoints. So as I come back to full draw, I want to make sure it's match my nose as I practice, the yep. mouth, the thumb, there's a certain spot. And I think it really boils down to that. But when that big one's out there, we've all been there. Yeah, for sure. I think it happens to the best of us. But I think, yeah, so you pretty much have like muscle memory. That's is what, is what, is yes. what, yeah. You do it enough repetition that um, that it's just going to be there when the time happens. Maybe to yeah. answer another portion to that, I think one of the biggest mistakes is just practice. You know, yeah. and I'm guilty. We're all yeah, guilty. Yeah, for like sure. Week before season, oh, hey. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, she's, she's shooting straight, yeah. Everyone wants to just, but a lot of people, um, I think a lot of people that are, I mean, at least you watch on YouTube, they shoot every time that they go out. So um, I think that's, you know, just practice for sure. I agree mm -hmm. on that. So so you would say the archer that has been doing it the longest, his number one mistake would be blaming equipment. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the main mistakes that archers make is blaming equipment, which I think we're all guilty for, you know, I mean, a little bit of, but... Um, what would be your advice for somebody that's getting into archery um, and something they need to, you know, work on when it comes to shooting? I think number one, definitely know your budget. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, <clears throat> do these bows that are worth 300 bucks, 500 bucks, 600 bucks, do they shoot the same as the 1100 plus or thousand dollars bow the flagship bow is that year? They, they shoot a little bit different, but they're pretty close. Yeah. My honest opinion, I think they all shoot pretty close. Speed's a big deal, you know, the yeah. archery thing, but forgiveness here, that word a ton. Um, I think it you just got to get out there and you got to practice. There's been guys that outshoot me with a $400 setup, and I got, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. There's guys that can outshoot me. There it is. And then once they find their bow and they want to start shooting, what's some techniques, you know, that you feel like is it – if you want to start building your 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 stance, your you know just something that's brand new, where's somewhere to start? What's some things you need to focus on? The grip? What 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 do you recommend? There? Grip's a big one. Everybody's got their own opinion. I would say the biggest thing is when you hold that bow and you come back to full draw 
have the same position touch points like you said earlier yeah, exactly so that's yeah mm -hmm. and i think it's something you know i work on as well like it's nice having a kisser for that instance you know you can put that even if the kisser doesn't kiss right in the corner of your lip if you know it, it touches just right behind that lip you can use that every single time mm -hmm. as long okay so so anchor touch points point. yeah yes. anchor points touch points so it's like you have like a little before pre-shot you have a little yes. you know you just go cheek nose whatever the order you go and you just check mark those things off like my golf shot and then i shank it um or you know hit a little fat shot whatever so i'm glad you brought golf into that but uh yeah so that makes sense i think that's something i could definitely work on as well um i'm not i wouldn't say you know i'm the best i could possibly be at shooting my bow i think there's a lot i need to work on but um, I think, obviously, I think practice with anything. That's mm -hmm. something I, 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 I know off the bat that needs to be done. If I could narrow it down to one, it would be practice. Yeah. The guys have been shooting 10, but 15 you, years. They, they're going to shoot a couple of days before season, a week, two weeks. Yeah, but do you think practicing bad habits could be bad practice? Yes and no. Because if you practice a ton, it's all bad practice. I mean, what would you think there? I think yes and no. That's a good point. I think yes and no. You are going to have bad habits, but almost like a golf shot. You know, I don't have the prettiest swing, but if it's consistent, you're going to narrow down that bow where they're sucking yeah. it in. It's muscle memory. Yeah. You know, if you have bad habits, you're used, your body's used to doing those bad habits. And I wouldn't say you compensate for it, but you, you tune that bow to the way you shoot. And that's yeah. what's cool about getting it sized, draw, pee, mm -hmm. getting it customized to you. I, that goes a long ways. Um, so customized to you. So a lot of people go to archery shops. Mm -hmm. And um, what's something you would recommend to somebody that's walking into an archery shop or when they're looking for somewhere to shop? What's something that they need to look out for from somebody that owns an archery shop What's something they need to be cognizant of that is, you know, shop talk. Okay. It's the same when you yeah. go, when you drop a boat in, you hear dock talk. You know, you shoot mechanical broadheads, I'm <clears throat> fixed blade, you hear other people's opinion, you listen to that old head. Yes, yeah, the old head that sits there every day. Gold temper. You know, Easton's the way to do or it. Or the guy that shows up every day there and buys a hat from him and hangs around the place. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm talking about Tyler, I'm joking. Um, but continue, yeah. <laughs> continue, yeah. The, the old head, not even the old head, just people there. Yeah, I would. I mean, when you walk into a shop, customizing and what you need to do, to stay away from. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, yeah. Let's be. What to be caution of? Like, what to to watch out for? The bad. When you walk, the bad. You know what? And what should you look for? Mm -hmm. I guess on that note too. So, what what should you look out for? Things to look out for is try not to be trendy. Yeah, of course, in archery and fishing and a bunch of other stuff. Very trendy stuff. Yeah. You know, whatever's new, I'm going to shoot that. New arrow, I'm shooting that. Yeah, yeah. It's the new and improved. Yeah. And there's some archery's come. I mean, look how far archery's come in the last 15, 20 yeah. years. Overdraws to a whisker biscuit to a drop away to yeah. you know, limb drive or whatever it is. But yeah. I don't think there's some bad stuff out there, but I think it's all good stuff. You need to find out what works for you. Yeah. I mean, shoot gold tip, you shoot carbon express. If it works for you, keep yeah. shooting it. Don't get caught up in shop talk. Yeah, I, something, I mean, just, I can speak on that a little bit. I mean, um, if, if you go somewhere and they're telling you, you only need to do this or you only need to do that, I, I, it's a, <clears throat> probably not the best place to shop. You know, you really want to go to a place the guy goes, you know, a lot of people shoot this, but you know, whatever you're comfortable with, do you like heavy, do you, you know, and if he's diving into your needs and your wants and being open-minded, he may love a bow in there in his own shop, but if he's just open-minded and trying to help you, that's where you need to shop. But mm -hmm. um, that's just something, you know, I know a lot of people that might watch this may be experienced and know all this stuff, but just for should, service, but for just, sure. but just, I'm a customer service guy. Um, if they treat me really well, I know what I want. I know what I don't need really. I just need their help on a few things. Um, for sure, I need their help on a few things. But I really focus on customer service, but, you know, not diving too much into an archery shop. But I think it'd be cool to own one one day, just to tinker in a little bit. And Could be in the future. Who knows? Yeah, I, I've thought about it a lot. Um, you know, I would love to sell a lot more stands and clothing in my archery shop. But I really thought about putting a uh, press in that shop. Really? Mm -hmm. 
that would be cool. I, I miss it. Yeah, um, but yeah, that was my main question to you was, you know, you've been around it a lot. I mean, I've been around a little, but I just want to dive in for anybody that's new to hunting and they come across this and want to know a lot about archery um, and just what to look out for, you know, things to work on. Touch points is a great thing to do. Practice, I mean, you know, nobody was great overnight um, at what they did. So that's an obvious and a really good point. So. Um, but the next thing I want to jump into, did you have another topic that you had off the top of your mind? That yeah. you, wanted to... you know, it's just like the the shop talk yeah. or dog talk is the big trend. You know, some people agree with it, some people don't. I'm starting to see that trend kind of switch back over to the old traditional days. Yeah. Does size matter? Of a deer. <laughs> yes. Of the rack. Want to dive right in and make sure we know that. In. It's a different podcast. Yeah, different, different podcast. Go to uh, Spotify for that one. Um, uh, you know, I, I'll be honest. If hunting shouldn't be about size. So um, I don't think it should be about size. I, I think just whatever makes you happy. But if you are a hunter and you live on social media, you're not going and you are influenced by social media, you're gonna want the biggest and best gear because that's all you see. But, um, but you know, size doesn't, so I don't think size matters. And for the people that, that push wedding gear go because they think it's you know, better for the population um, and, they wanna, and they're just really wanting to manage their land, that's great. Um, and manage, managing your land is, is awesome, right? If you can manage your property, grow your bucks, harvest a mature buck every year, I think that's awesome. That's what I'm trying to do, right? I'm trying to harvest a mature buck. They're at the end of their life, right? They're not at the beginning, but I don't think it matters. I think if you enjoy going out in the woods and shooting anything that's legal, um, obviously legal, then I think you should do that. I, I don't think anybody should criticize anybody and I, I do my best that anytime anybody kills anything, I think it's awesome. I think I don't care. It's a great deer, um, whatever they kill, as long as it brought them happiness. Because if a deer starts not bringing you happiness after you kill it, and you feel bad about the size. Then what do we, you know? Like I've done that a million times, mm-hmm. killed it and regretted it. Well, then what are we doing in the hunting industry? That's wrong because I don't think people should be upset about what they kill. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you're upset because it's not the one you wanted, like on your property, and you were kind of hold off. I understand being upset about that, but like being upset, like man, I'm gonna be embarrassed to post this, or like show people, like then you know, then you know, why are we doing it? You know, so but that's my opinion. Well, I, I I think just it just matters who you are and what you're trying to do. Agreed. Everybody's got a different thing. I I want to drift into all that. I think. For me, size, size doesn't matter. You know, we can go into age. That could be a different deal. That is the yeah, other. That's why I said, like, yes. I like to kill a deer at the end of its life. I sure always haven't. I don't always do that. But if a group of does came in, I want to kill the oldest doe there. You know, it's an old doe. Stinks. She knows you're there. Yeah. <laughs> she, she always knows, and the kill yearlings the don't. And the yearlings, yeah, yeah, the yearlings don't. You know, I don't know what it is. No. Um, <laughs> That's still next year. <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah, continue. Um, what do you think? Yeah. Um, size size does not matter. Yeah. Does not. In my opinion, it kind of goes with our name. I mean, the voyage. Voyage outdoors is the adventures, the memories that you share. That's, I, I didn't bring up memories, but yeah, you're 100% right. We That's all it is. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's all about the memory. Mm-hmm. And so it goes well with the name. I think, um, you know, we've all done, you mentioned this. Yeah. There's been times where you do, you know, maybe harvest a, a buck you may not be satisfied with, but you kind of mentioned on social media, and it's so sad. It's kind of the world we live in now. Yeah. Man, you know, he's 120. I don't yeah. many likes. You know, he ain't that big. Yeah. Of course, we're going to see a bunch of comments and stuff. And please share, too. We like to get your input on that. Yeah. Everybody's a little bit different. I always like hearing other people's opinion. For sure. Definitely. Thank you. I mean, it's about the adventure. It's about the memories. Yeah. You know, me and you were hunting maybe the uh, first time running camera. We shoot maybe a son of boomer. I don't care. Yeah. We can share that with you and you, me and you only. When I see, hey, you remember the yeah. book we shot? Huh? Yeah. 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 I know. So that's, I think that's what it's about. And it's... That was tradition. Exactly. 
That's why I think doing it with somebody is so amazing. It's just mm -hmm. about the memory. It doesn't even matter. Like we won't even remember. You know, we'll remember. Yeah, it was a good deer, but like we don't, we don't care about that thirty years from now. We're just gonna talk we'll know about if it's a good shot or bad shot for sure. That yeah, <laughs> that we will remember. That terrible shot I had I whiffed that doe early season. You know, we'll we'll remember those things. Um, but but yeah. Okay, so I like that. Um, I've always you know kind of had. I always want to talk about that. But, yeah, yeah, me too. I have. But um, my next thing was I want to do a little something informational. They kind of wrap kind of towards the end here. But um, I want to do late season tips mm -hmm. for everybody. Um, my strategy late season, and I want you to go first in your strategy. I may steal some of your content. No, I'm good. Um, you go first. Tell me your late season strategy. I'll kind of tell you what mine has always been. But mm -hmm. yeah. if you guys go back to episode one, we talked about the one week. I typically do the rut. Just being honest, I typically do that. Oh, well, when you hunt, time. Time. yeah. But most of the deer that I've killed, the bigger deer, have been late season. For sure, it's almost like early season. My opinion of this is they're so patternable. You talk food, yes, bedding, hundred percent. Okay. Whoa, whoa, let's find that happy medium. Yeah. Where are you traveling? That's what I want to know. Yeah. Or some people, you know, I'll focus on bed or just food. But um, now I will say. Tactics will change if you do not have food. Yeah, you better have bedding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They don't, they're not chasing does. They're, they no. don't care. No. Um, yeah. No. So I just want to say they're a lot easier to pattern. Mm -hmm. Then you have this low I love late season. Me too. If you can bear the cold, but yeah. Yeah, totally agree. Couldn't agree more. Um, no, I, I even like Thanksgiving morning. You'll hear a lot of people shooting deer around Thanksgiving. Um, you know, it's kind of like that after rut, like they're just trying to eat a little bit. Um, it's like, you know, they, they just want food after, after they rut for so long, but it's their body is literally shut down. Um, I do want to add one more thing. Yeah, I want to add something. You guys write this down too. So late season, something that I've done, yeah. the leaves are all gone. You can see a mile down for the sure. Yeah, it's the best That time. is a prime time to scout. Mm. Dropping horns, not dropping horns. Yeah. Great. So you think it's better to be in a stand where you can see some, see a good portion of your farm um, and kind of pattern them? Yeah. Just good. have a place for a lookout at least, do some scouting. Yeah, do good observation sits. Now, I'm there to kill one, you know, harvest yeah. one, but um, good observation now. Do their patterns change from early season, mid season to late season? Yes. For sure. I was about to say that is trails, bedding. Yeah. He, Areas but see, that's a portion that we sometimes forget is um, deer have, I feel, an early an early year spot. Obviously, they have their, mm -hmm. where they're going to summer at, where they're going to fall at. And people don't talk about where they're going to, I call it where they're going to December at, right? Yeah. Right, it's going to be food generally, but at least you know in December, you can start figuring out what bucks maybe weren't on your property in the fall. Right, they were there in the summer. They weren't in the fall. Maybe they come back. We had that. We actually had that happen the other day. Thing I don't show camera. A buck that leaves us every fall. October first hits. October fifteenth, whatever in that time span, he leaves. He came back. He was a group of honey somewhere. Yeah. 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 Well, no, he, he didn't come back in the fall. He came back last week. Hmm. So for the first time, he he. No, sorry, every year he's missed the run. Right, the fall, everything. He's gone. October 1st, the first week of October, he's gone. Every year. Never comes back. Every September, he shows up in Velvet. It's like clockwork. This year, he showed up in the winter. And it makes me want to dive into why. So, we've added a lot of food sources on our on, our, on that little plot he came back to. I was going to say farm. Property. And, yeah. you know, acorns were heavy this year on our place at least. I know that. So, I mean, uh, let's say acorns. I don't know the time span when they're going to eat those. But... We had a bunch of food sources, and I think that slightly paid off in a little way. Um, you know, we live around thousands of acres of crops, so the deer can easily migrate to those, which is a quarter mile from my dad's place. But I think a little bit has to do with our bedding and our little slight bit of food and turnips and all that stuff we put in. So, I don't know. Turn to your mind. Yeah, so yeah. something to think about. So, we, we know that he's there in December. We might do double down the food and then try to hunt him if we miss him next year in the you know so, uh, the se early september the october we miss him again we'll know he'll be back next december so 
but they, they do that on the same for my farm too it's the same thing yeah. you have residential bucks and then you don't for sure i think it goes to property i really do so there's something that your neighbor has that you don't have and he's like that's why i said hey he's got a pile of honey somewhere he's got some does that he likes somewhere oh. else but it could be bedding it could be a bunch of different stuff but yeah you do have yeah you're honey. right yeah he's got honey somewhere else for sure or he's got a spot that he feels comfortable yes. chasing deer in um yeah the only that's gonna see them which that's fine yeah but um no you're right and and the thing there is too is like you know um you know those early season bucks that leave you know you've you've got a game plan on why are they leaving you know how do i game plan around this we've added food right we've added cover in a way we're trying to add cover we're trying to you know grow our farm to be a spot where they stay all year but you said the home bucks we've got a lot of home bucks right that's their home they never leave they're there year round year round right for the most part right and sometimes this can be good good and bad when you have a buck let's say he's a hundred and you know 10 inch eight pointer right he could be a bully buck and a lot of people kill their bully buck and you need to kill your bully buck if he's bullying other bucks that are bigger and and more mature just whatever off your property you need to shoot him Mm -hmm. I've had that time and time again. We've had a buck in the past that was a bully buck, yep. and I never thought about shooting him. We named one bully because really? he hands down. Oh yeah. yes, Maybe they will mean. push your your target buck off miles off your property faster than a human can because they're a bully buck, and that's what they do. It's their territory. Um, I want to touch on that. It's an important thing for people to know and understand that you need to, you know, and that's why I mean, cell cameras are the way to go. Mm -hmm. You know, if you haven't invested in those, I, I would highly, highly recommend. Um, that could be another podcast. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Invested in those mobile ones. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it tells you to, to, so much information that uh, that you need to know, like, on the spot, right? Like, he's there. Boom, today. You know, okay, he just went by. He went back to bed. I'm going to go hop in the stand. Like, no, instead of you going in sliding the card into the card reader mm -hmm. and having to do all that. It's like Christmas every time. Yeah, so. it, it is like Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's That's better than Christmas, yeah. yeah. So, all right, um, oh, that was a good topic. I'm glad that yeah. the late season, kind of what we talked about, you know, um, some, some game plans. Anything else you want to add to that game plan-wise for late season that people can know? Like right now it's, you know, December 15th. Um, Honestly, it's a month fun. left. Yeah. One month left in season. Crazy, it flies by. It does. If, if you have to harvest one, of course, I'm I'm one of them. You um, need to gotta be out there pros. because right now, yeah. a lot of big pros leave. You know, a lot of those guys they rec they prefer late season because they're easy to pattern. Yep. And also, it's a good time to scout. It's it good is. To keep, just to dial in your farm a little bit more. Um, trail cams are huge. As always, you're around. Yeah, and right now in Missouri, the the weather's fluctuating so much that it's be making it easy to judge a cold front right now. The whole month isn't cold. Mm -hmm. It's been hot, and then it throws us a 20 high of a 30 degree day, low of 20s in the middle of the week, and that makes it easy for me to understand. Okay, Thursday, I'm going right. 72 um, today. Yeah, 72 degrees today in Missouri, and so right now it seems simple, you know, to hit those cold fronts and play December as it is and and be in their bedding with their food, you know, or be in between. Um, but yeah, that's our take on a little late season for you. Hope you can, hope that can help. Um, but mainly like Tyler said, I, I like the scouting, right? Get some intel on your property. Oh, I see. Or go sit in a stand you normally wouldn't sit in in the rut, you know? Something new, something you maybe think uh, off the wall for late season. That's something I think is important to try something different. I mean, it's late season, right? And if you kill a buck and you're trying to harvest a doe, go somewhere else, try something new. See the deer movement from a different angle. So that's my interview. Appreciate you guys tuning in. This was a short one today, but we just are, are thankful for anybody that wants to watch and, and like and comment. We appreciate that. It helps out the channel a ton. Um, if you liked it, um, we, we just ask if you did like it, please share it to your friends and family um, helps us out. We want to grow this and continue to grow this. And, and we want to say thanks as well if you took the time to watch. So thanks again. And uh, episode three will be out very soon. We appreciate it.